I hope everyone had a happy Halloween. Thanksgiving's going to be coming up soon, which I don't really have anything noteworthy relating to it that I can mention. I mean, otherwise what usually goes on in my town. The most significant thing to happen is that I actually began working at Formaggio's around that time. They were serving something called a Thanksgiving pizza. They're two different kinds. Both actually use a giant stuffing in place of the pizza dough. One uses gravy and the other cranberry in place of the pizza sauce. Then both pizzas get topped with foods associated with the holiday. Of course, turkey is a given, but it's a pretty free-form recipe. The secret is making sure that the crust is crispy enough to withstand the moisture of the sauce and toppings. I won't tell you to go find formaggios around Thanksgiving to get it, but if you can make it at home, I'd recommend it. Getting the stuffing crisp without burning it is a bit of trial and error process. I think it's worth it, though. With a small talk out of the way, I'll be picking this back up from when Nick got cured. Well, thanks, I told the old woman. Do we need to pay you? There's no need for that. However, I can glimpse your futures for you if you like. I glanced at Carl and Nick, who both gave me a shrug. Sure, why not? How are you going to be doing it? Reading tea leaves? Not quite. Could you get that box from on the top shelf? The box was wooden and carved intricately with faces of a cheetah, jaguar, lion, and tiger. Lifting its lid showed me a clear crystal ball lying on top of velvet cushioning. I guess you prefer the classic ways of fortune telling? I joked. She didn't laugh. Put it on the coffee table. I did as told and she placed her hands over it. Doing so caused it to begin glowing white. We can't see anything, I said. It takes years of the right kind of practice. Do you ever check your future? That is something I'd rather not know about. Now, be quiet. I must concentrate. She closed her eyes and started humming something. We watched her silently. Then the light of the ball went from white to blood red, causing it to make the room look like it was being used for developing photos. The word ominous hardly does justice to how we felt seeing this. Her eyes were wide and filled with fear. What are you seeing? Carl asked. She didn't answer. Instead, she shrieked so loudly it was a wonder all glass objects in her vicinity didn't shatter. Then she fell to the floor with her eyes still open. The light the crystal ball gave off faded instantly. We were hoping the old woman was just in shock. Unfortunately, this did not turn out to be the case. She's dead, Carl informed us after checking her pulse. What did she see? Nick asked, backing away. I'm not sure we want to know, I replied, turning my gaze away from her corpse. I think the question we should be focusing on right now is what are we going to do with her? If we leave her here, it could be a while before anyone discovers that she died. I don't think we have a choice, Carl said. If we bury her, nobody will know how she went missing. It'll cause an investigation and we might end up with more people after us. That's one of the last things we need. Speaking of which, we're going to have another encounter soon, Nick spoke up. I know this is in bad taste, but do you think we should take something from here that might help us? That was a difficult question. On one hand, she did have a lot of things, some of which could help us. On the other, we didn't know their purpose. For all we knew, one of the objects could end up cursing us. That's something we have enough trouble with. 
I'm not saying she seemed the type to do that to someone. It's more that it wouldn't surprise me if something dangerous happened to fall into her possession. After some back and forth discussion, we chose to only take one thing each. Carl chose an old pocket watch. Nick chose the book that she was using to perform rituals. I chose the crystal ball. Should we, you know, say something before we leave? Nick asked. Uh, sure, Carl replied and then cleared his throat. Before he could say anything, a low noise became audible. What the hell is that? I asked, looking around. Did either of you hear that? Yeah, Carl replied. It almost sounds like giggling. A chilling realization washed over us. Our head whipped where she was lying. What began as giggling was now quick, insane laughing. She did it with an unnaturally wide grin on her face. I thought you said she was dead, Nick stammered to Carl. I felt how he sounded. I thought she was. I checked her pulse. There was nothing. Her laughter steadily grew even louder, changing into loud cackling. You three are the best ones yet, she said. Her voice was different, now sounding unnervingly inhuman. Her eyes were now what I can only describe as a milky black. Who are you? I shouted at it. What are you? Its unwavering grin at my distress was both infuriating and frightening. I felt like an ant under a magnifying glass. No need to get so feisty, Pete. I am only looking for a friendly conversation. To answer your question, though, I'm the one who's been responsible for your little adventures. It's delightful to be able to speak with you all. It's not something I get to do very often. Adventures? Carl roared. Do you know what you have put us through? It only yawned in response, ignoring his outrage. If it weren't for the fact shutting it up would mean beating up an old lady, he would have probably beat the living hell out of it. Although, from how twisted that thing was, it might have enjoyed that. What about you? It asked Nick. I know you've had your fair share of agony since meeting these two. I hope you're prepared to experience far more. What do you want? He replied to it. What any god wants. Entertainment. You're a god? It gave an expression as if asking if we knew who we were dealing with now. Learning this came with terrible implications for us. That should be obvious. How else would I be able to do all this? Which god are you? I inquired of it. One that goes back a very long time. You can call me Indifremist. You know, your kind used to be a lot furrier. It's amazing how much things have changed since I've entered your world. Why us? Why not you? Its question told us that we were only toys to it. Things seemed pretty bleak then. I mean, it essentially meant we were the playthings of some malevolent deity beyond our comprehension. Still, even with this knowledge, we still planned on beating any challenges it threw at us. I'll leave you all with a little parting gift. In the blink of an eye, it shot forward. Tapping us on our foreheads, I saw a flash of light when it did. In it, I could see the silhouette of something incomprehensibly large. Its shape is not something I can accurately describe, since I only viewed part of it. When the vision faded, I collapsed to the floor, along with Carl and Nick. What was that? I asked breathlessly. Me. It laughed again. As it did, I could see parts of the old woman's face starting to flake off. 
Soon, the only thing left of her was a dried skeleton. The thing possessing her must have left because what was left of her body crumpled. We left without another word about what we've just seen. Whoever came across her is probably having a hell of a time trying to figure out how in the hell she ended up like that. The bigger question weighing on us is how we're going to deal with this end of Framis. Why do eldritch beings have such pretentiously long names? Can't one ever be called Bob or something? I guess it comes with the whole driving people insane with only your appearance thing. Whatever the reason, we had our work cut out for us. Right now, we're safe from it. However, the way we're dealing with it may not work for the town. Hopefully, we'll figure out a solution to that problem when we head back. For now, this is Pete, signing out.